Hello, one, four, two, and three. Hello, Hello one, four, two, and three. Hello. Communication has been a vital component of warfare since time immemorial. From the most primitive smoke signals to the use of flags, drums and flares. Leaders on the battlefield have needed to communicate their orders to the troops and receive reports from the warriors in the field. Without information, an army was virtually blind, deaf and dumb. Even at the onset of organized warfare, the need for communication created specialist individuals. And then, small units of these specialists. The signalers, drummers, runners, flag bearers, young buglers, and later, linemen and radiomen accompanied the fighting men, their captains, and their generals. The Ceylon Signal Corps was officially formed in 1943 during the turmoil of the Second World War. But a company of signals had already existed before the 1930s under the Royal Engineers. This company, manned by British and Ceylonese troops, served in the Second Boer War and the First World War. The signalers used pennants, lamps and heliographs in a basic communication system. They also served as dispatch riders. In World War II, the signalers covered communication all across Ceylon. After independence, the Signal Corps was expanded to a squadron and in 1958 to a full regiment. Lieutenant Colonel D.V. Breuer taking over as its first commanding officer. Over the next two decades, the Army and the Signal Corps was involved in internal security duties, culminating in the first post-independence combat operations during the 1971 insurgency. In 19, the 1970s, and a uh, lot of our inadequacies came to light, not, not only of the Signal Corps, uh, of the entire army. And uh, this I am alluding to the 1971 insurrection. And the in inadequacies were very sharply brought out. From that point onwards, uh, well, if I may say, the army sort of woke up and started taking note of what was happening, how to improve, how to change. By the 1980s, the threat of the Tamil separatists had forced the mostly ceremonial Sri Lanka army of the post-independence decades to expand rapidly, and with it, the Signal Corps. The army was spread thinly in the northeast, its units and bases often in isolated positions and lines of communication were always under threat by the terrorists who were using guerrilla tactics. Radio communication became more and more important for command and control and quick reinforcements. By the late 80s, the army had expanded to two divisions and this required an expansion of the army's communication system as well. So, with the addition of another regiment, the Signal Corps grew to a brigade. In 1991, an electronic warfare squadron was formed to eavesdrop on enemy radio communications and to locate their positions with direction-finding technology. Electronic intelligence gathering became a potent weapon, feeding intelligence to the infantry units and their supporting arms and helping with the timely decision-making. In addition, electronic countermeasures like jamming was extensively used to disturb enemy communications during battle. Meticulously planned radio battles, too, used to deceive the enemy. By the mid-1990s, the war against the LTTE was at its peak, and the army was regularly carrying out simultaneous operations in different areas, some at very long ranges. To make sure long-range patrols could be in constant contact, more sophisticated radios with mobile and man-portable repeater capabilities were introduced. As the war progressed, Tiger artillery was proving itself a significant force on the battlefield. To carry out effective counter-battery strikes, the Sri Lanka artillery needed new technology. Direction-finding radar systems manned by the Signal Corps came to the rescue 
giving the gunners the ability to quickly locate enemy batteries and target them. The Signal Corps now had a role in the battlefield fire support of the infantry and armor. Before all this, however, the Signal Corps had been called on to take on a role usually given to infantry. In 1994, the Army ordered its supporting arms to form their own infantry-oriented reinforcement battalions to provide support to the frontline infantry units, to defend and secure captured territory, and to carry out limited operations in these areas. That year, the Signal Corps deployed its first regiment in this role, the 5th Reinforcement Regiment, SLSC. By the end of the war in 2009, the Signal Corps had five reinforcement regiments in the field. The signalers were no longer just a supporting arm. The experience in the infantry role served the Signal Corps well when the war recommenced in 2006 after the ceasefire years. Improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, had long been a deadly weapon in the arsenals of guerrillas and terrorists all over the world, and in Sri Lanka, the Tigers made good use of it. To counter the IEDs, the Signal Corps introduced the K3 Jammer, a man-packed system. It could tune into suspect frequencies and jam them, preventing IEDs from being remotely detonated. At this time, the Sri Lanka Air Force introduced unmanned aerial vehicles, or UAVs, to its armory. These UAVs were constantly gathering strategic, operational and tactical intelligence in the form of aerial photos and video. Intelligence that would be invaluable to the Army. The Signal Corps linked the Air Force's live video streams with the microwave system of the Army, enabling rapid transfer of real-time aerial photos and videos to the Army's various headquarters at multiple levels. The signalers now had a role that went beyond ground operations, connecting the Air Force's intelligence to the Army's fighting formations and the Navy's strike and transport craft offshore. As the war came to an end in 2009, the Signal Corps was busy introducing a new voice and data network and in 2010 set up the data network using the already existing microwave backbone and fiber optics to link the various formation headquarters across the country. This system was later extended so that it could be used by Sri Lankan peacekeeping forces on the UN operations in Haiti and Lebanon. Today all the branches and directorates of Hamid headquarters are interconnected for data and voice communication. Not only that, signals have expanded to field formation and regiment centers and their lateral communication. Integration is one of the main principles of communication. During the humanitarian operations, we were able to get the real-time video footages transferred into the field formation where LTT targets were effectively taken by other forces. In addition to the signalers manning these networks, based at all the static military complexes across the country. Each security forces headquarters carrying out offensive operations had its own organic signal regiment attached. For example, in July 2008, the 9th Regiment SLSC was raised and deployed in Manor, dedicated to the 58th Division. I remember the Signal Corps grew from the humble Morse code to electronics and finally to cyber. And it has been something which maintained the cohesiveness of the forces by providing communication at all levels, from the section level right up to division and army level. And in the battle that we had or the conflict that we had in the north, signals played a vital role in communication by providing jamming facilities, by providing uh, communication security, and also artillery fire and air to ground communications. I think they've done a wonderful job and we can never do without them. Recruits to the Signal Corps need to be a special breed of men and women. In addition to the technical knowledge and IT literacy required by the modern signaler, these recruits need to be as fit and disciplined as any infantryman. On top of this, signalers then go through a plethora of specialist training that will equip them to man and maintain the array of radio communication networks radio relay systems, auto exchanges and computers that the modern signaler uses. Multiple languages, signal intelligence gathering, radio maintenance, IT troubleshooting, map reading, photo analysis. The list of specialties go on forever. 
The Signal is today one of the best and most expensively trained soldiers in the army. Additionally, the Directorate of IT is continuously working on new systems through its R&D teams, developing software that is automating the Sri Lanka Army's administrative workflow to eventually make it a completely paper-free environment. Cybersecurity too is an important part of the IT workload and the signalers have developed several programs to protect the Army's data from outside infiltration. The Signal Corps of today is a division-sized formation and has six regular Classic Signals regiments and a volunteer Classic Signals regiment attached to each of the Army's seven regional security force headquarters. In addition, it has two Information Technology Signals regiments, one Cybersecurity regiment and a Software Engineering and Development wing attached to the Directorate of Information Technology. The School of Signals is tasked with training for the entire organization and the Communication Technology Regiment repairs and maintains the communication and electronic equipment of the Army. An independent signal squadron is attached to Army Headquarters. In the year 2018, Sri Lanka Army Signal School celebrates its uh, 75th anniversary. This is a very important year for the signalers. During the warfare, which we have been facing for many years, this is the fourth generation warfare which we are looking at today. During the first warf uh, warfare, it had been always where the masses of troops get together and fight each other. Second generation had been the time where the weapons were introduced and they were fighting with the weapons. The third generation was basically on the manualistic approach where the maneuvers were on very speed. Today, the fourth generation which we face, the communication is a most important factor. The signalers of today's world needs to be improved to face the challenges in terms of network-centric warfare, which has gone beyond the space and even to IT communications, networks, outer space, and the cyber warfare. As the commander of the army, I believe today, looking at the capacity-based army in future, signalers have a tough challenge to face and they should be get ready to face the fourth generation warfare, which is basically onto the cyber and network centric warfare. So I'm confident the signalers of the Sri Lanka Army who have really contributed to the victories of the Sri Lankan Army which we fought is always ready and they are professional to handle it. The Sri Lanka Signal Corps will now become the central nervous system of the armed forces collating and disseminating the information gathered by reconnaissance, intelligence, surveillance and target acquisition systems, converting and storing it as digital data, and then making it available for use by whoever needs it. As such, the Signal Corps of today will become that system. Sri Lanka Signal Corps is always considered as a key force multiplier. During the last 30 years of military campaign in Sri Lanka, Signal Co dominated electromagnetic spectrum against adversaries and provided reliable communication support to the entire army to achieve victory. I am sure even in the future, Sri Lanka Signal Co will be the DNA of Sri Lanka Army for all communication and computer applications required for the nation. Operating a secure web of network computers that is as technologically distant from the man pack radios of the 1980s as the telephone of today is from the semaphore of the Boer Wars. <laughs>